oh boy, this has been a long time coming. I know I promised you guys a video pretty soon, but we had to wait until Avatar 3.0. And as some of you know, I've been really busy with the virtual market project. If you've been following my videos for a while, you'll see that I've been uploading a few things about that. And being more involved with them, I want to do a tutorial that involves some of the assets that they've created and point you guys in the right direction for some legal models. So you know what time it is. It's time for an updated tutorial. This time, we're going to be using Avatars 3.0. Go ahead and create a new project. You will want to create a brand new project file for Avatars 3. So go ahead and hit new. Create one for Avatars 3. Put it in a place you'll remember. And let's get started there. Inside Unity, you need to do a couple of things. What I highly recommend doing is first, you should save a new scene, and inside your Assets folder, you should create an Avatars folder. You should install Dynamic Bone if you own it. Since you're making a new project, you're going to want to stay organized. The first thing I recommend doing is downloading a set of assets. These are basic things that can be used as a toolkit for building avatars. Obviously, you want the latest versions of Avatars 3.0 from the VRChat.com website. Next, you want to grab a bunch of shaders. Some of the most commonly used shaders include Arctoon Final, which is a discontinued shader, but it's still used a lot in Japanese avatars. You'll be able to use that shader to change it over to other shaders later, so at least you can see how it was configured previously. You might want to grab Arctoon Plus T, which is a basically compatible shader for Arctoon that is still maintained. I highly recommend Silence Shell Shading Shader. This one is maintained by an excellent member of the community who knows what they're doing, and most of the lighting in that shader will work correctly for VRChat. The shader is skewed towards VRChat, along with Shay's Unity Shaders, and finally Reflex Shader, which is also another shader that is well-maintained and popular in Japan. Just to round things off, you may also want to grab Unity Chan Toon Shader 2, because some avatars will use that, even if you're going to replace it. And for this tutorial, we're going to be editing the Mokuri avatar, and we're going to look at some new features in Avatars 3.0, like custom particle and emoji menus, as well as how to do standard gestures that you used to do on your hands. One other thing I highly recommend you grab is Pumpkin's Avatar Tools. You can find all of these links in the description below. Pumpkin's Avatar Tools is now compatible with Avatars 3, which is another reason why I was delaying this video. And you'll find in here the ability to edit poses, create custom backgrounds, and rapidly iterate your models. In here, it'll automatically find missing scripts for you, and you'll be able to copy settings from other avatars. It's extremely useful, and I highly recommend it. As for Blender, not much has changed, except Blender is now on 2.9. I can confirm that the development version of Cat's Blender plugin, which is also linked below, works perfectly. So you want to be on 17.1-dev as of this video. However, you'll probably want to be on later, or you'll probably be on later versions by the time you get this, as it does get updated pretty quickly. This fixes a few bugs and allows you to embed textures on export to FBX prefab files. But that's pretty much all you need to know for now. When you're working with avatars, you probably want a good image editor. The one I recommend is Krita. It's free, open source, and just about as good as Photoshop. Go ahead and get that installed. You probably also want to go into the Windows setting, go to, go to Rendering, and open up Lighting Settings. The first thing you want to do is scroll down to the bottom and turn off Auto Generate. Next, you're going to want to save your scene. So go File, Save As, give it a name. I highly recommend using a Scenes folder so that you can keep track of all of your avatars. Every avatar should be its own scene file. We're going to call this one Mokuri Tutorial. Now that that's all set up, Right-click on your Assets folder and create some folders. Create a folder for your avatars. I also recommend creating a folder for your shaders. If your shader supports being placed into a folder different from when it's installed, this is a great place to keep track of them. As long as you can clear the console and there's no errors, everything's okay. Okay, just a couple more setup things. Under Edit, Preferences, we want to click on Cache Server. Inside here, you can set up a custom cache server location, or you can just leave it alone. As long as you set the cache server mode to local and set a reasonable size for the cache itself, this will allow you to rapidly switch between Android and PC. It's extremely useful and allows you to upload your avatars very quickly between both platforms. Most of the avatars that I create are Android compatible and you should be too. Even if your avatar is not, not the same, if you upload it under the same blueprint ID, you'll have something for Android. There's lots of options for that. And most of the avatars that we're going to be creating are going to be fairly well optimized. Now, once you're all set with there, just make sure you save again and let's get started. For this tutorial, we're going to grab Lesser Mokuri. What we're going to use is the fan made one. There is a ton of materials and additional things for, Mo for the Mokuri project. If you don't know about the Mokuri project, it's made by Akihito Shukashi, who made an anime about an abyss. If we hop in here, you'll see that we have some prefab files already. 
one of these is already set up for Arctune, which is why we installed it earlier. Even though Arctune has been discontinued, it's still commonly used on avatars. So at the very least, even if you're going to replace the shader, you should have it installed so that you can see how the previous shader material was set up. This tutorial is going to seem a little bit backwards. The reason why we imported everything into Unity first is because a lot of these packages come as Unity packages. It does give you the added benefit of, what we, of when you do go to Blender, you'll be able to see those changes that you're making in real time. So now that your Mercury files and maybe some additional files that you found in the links below as accessories or other things that you might want to personally modify are inside Unity, you have your shaders installed, you have Avatars 3.0 installed, you're pretty much ready to go. Now we're actually going to jump over to Blender and then jump back into Unity after optimizing the avatar. The Mokuri avatar comes in a lot of parts and it does expect you to know a little bit about what you're doing, but we're going to teach you how to do that. So go ahead and open up Blender. I've already deleted the default cube, although you don't really have to do that. Go to Cats, click Import Model. We're going to find our directory that contains the Lesser Mokuri fan-made body. We're actually going to go and grab the actual FBX file and we're going to go ahead and click Import Any Model. The next step is we're going to go to our spanner and click on keep upper chest bones, keep twist bones. We're going to uncheck these options here. The reason why I recommended that you do that is just in case you have some bones that are used for accessories that are disabled or other things like that that it's expecting that we don't remove those files as we import them into Unity. The other thing we're going to uncheck is join meshes. Then we'll go ahead and click fix model. The first thing you're going to notice is that the left elbow and the right elbow are named differently. Now this currently doesn't have any materials on it. That's easy to fix too. You'll notice that there's two materials that come along with this model. One is H body and the other one is H prompts. So what we need to do is expand down here in this materials tab where it says or where it has this image. Click on this open image button and we're going to go into our texture folder and bring in body base color. We're going to find a mesh that has the props material. We're going to again expand where it says base color. And we're going to click on the props texture base color. This is just so that we have an idea of what we're looking at. Now the ears on this model actually use props and so does the hat. But we can switch the material over later. Now this is where you get to do some customization. What I recommend doing, let's say for example you wanted Mokuri's armor. We can import the original lesser Mokuri from the model file. No. You can bring in the original Mokuri, just click fix model. So let's go ahead and remove the armature and we're going to get rid of the body, the ears, the hair, and anything that's already there in the fan made model. Now what we're left with is simply the armor pieces. These armor pieces don't have any armature anymore, but that's on purpose. We can actually attach it to the other one. We do have to separate the armor from left and right so that we can attach it correctly just on the arm pieces at least. So let's press tab and go into edit mode. Before we go any further, this is where we're going to talk about blender preferences. I have some recommendations, not everyone, they won't work for everyone, but I do personally recommend them and it, it may help you follow along. But for navigation, you want turntable, orbit around selection, auto perspective and depth. You probably want continue for zoom and your zoom axis to be vertical. As for your key map, you, make, you can choose to select with the left hand, with the left button and that's fine. The right, right click select is really nice if you get used to it. Spacebar action should definitely be set to search. Most of you won't be using play or tools unless you're doing animations inside Blender. And if you're doing that, you probably don't need this tutorial. The grab or tilde is used to navigate or bring up your gizmos. The middle mouse action should be orbit around the model and you hold shift to do pan. And alt middle mouse should be relative to the rest of the model. Tab for pie menu is really, really useful. If you use the pie menu and the extra shading pie menus, it allows you to do something like this. When you press tab, you can switch between modes inside Blender. This allows you to jump quickly between those modes. There's a couple other add-ons that I recommend. Under preferences, under add-ons, you'll see that there's 3D navigation and some of the other ones. Obviously you need Cat's Blender plugin and you can find how to do that in other videos and tutorials and the link is below. As well, you probably want you probably want dynamic context menu and you can find this by searching. It's a default blender add on. This gives you a really nice searchable menu that is contextual based on what mode you're in and what tab you're on. You might also want node wrangler and we may get into that someday, but from here that should work for now. So let's go ahead and click on this. We're going to press tab. We're going to go over to our edit mode. We're going to go into x-ray view, which is at the top here. We're going to select one side 
of the armor. And we're going to press space, which brings up, again, our dynamic context menu, or search if you don't have it installed. And we're just going to type separate. A lot of things can be found inside the Blender menu just by searching for them. So we want to separate the selection, which is this. And now we'll go back into object mode. Now we have a second one, arm guard one, arm guard two. Essentially, your right arm guard and your left arm guard. Now to attach them, and this is applicable to attaching anything in Blender, it's really simple. Let's go into cats. Let's get out of x-ray mode just so it looks a little nicer. And we're going to click on this piece here. And we're going to click on custom model creation. And we're going to attach mesh. Make sure that you have join mesh is turned off for now. The mesh you want is arm guard one, forearm left, and the base should be armature. Go ahead and attach mesh. And one thing you'll notice it's going to do is it's going to create this bone. This is the forearm L dot merge. Now this bone was created as an anchor point for this other mesh. Now you don't actually need it, but you do need its weight. So what we need to do is go to model options. And in here, you'll see that there is a merge weights to parents. So if you click on this bone and you click to parents, it's going to disappear. So now all of the weight from this piece, this arm piece is set to forearm left. This is how you attach just about everything. Now, why are we doing this? The reason why we're doing this is one, to teach you how to attach things to models and two, to use the full bodied Mokuri model underneath. So if you wanted to change something like, for example, not have a second arm guard, then you can do that. Now these props here, as well as this cylinder, probably need to be attached to the hips. So what we're gonna do is click first on the apron. First click on the apron, which includes these saddlebags here. And just like before, we're going to go base, armature, mesh, apron, attach to, this time, hips. Attach mesh. And again, it's gonna create this funny little bone here. And we're going to remove this by merging its weight into the parents. Sometimes you might not want to do that. Maybe you want to have them jiggle, for example. You could adjust the bone and have them move um, with dynamic bone or something like that. But in this case, again, we're just going to merge it to its parents so that we don't have all these extra bones inside the model. Bones affect your avatar performance rating, so we want to make sure that we only have the least amount that we actually need. Finally, we have these cylinders. And again, you'll see that since it's a separate piece, it's going to show up here. Now, what if I want an only one set of cylinders? I could tab into edit mode. I can go into our x-ray view so that I can select all the way through the model and I can select one side of them and let's say let's still go ahead and delete that. Just delete vertices, go back into object mode, get out of x-ray view and again I can attach these cylinders to the hips. Now as you can imagine this works with anything. If you wanted to bring in something other than the original Mercury model or if you wanted to import say a camera or a sword or some other object you can easily attach those things to your models with the that option and if you leave the mesh separate you can create animations that toggle the meshes on and off for now i'm just going to leave it as it is and we'll go over some of those things as we get back into unity you're going to want to combine all of these things eventually so let's go ahead and attach the hips to the model one last time we're going to remove the extra piece one last time we're going to remove the extra bone that is created and merge its weights to the parents. And now we need to start thinking about editing the model's material files. Body, I, first of all, I know that the helmet is wrong, so let's go ahead and go to props, so that that's correct. And we're gonna go to our ears as well, and we're gonna go to props. Now, inside the links below, you'll find that there is a link to some Mokuri ears. Now let's go ahead and remove these ears from Mokuri ear. Let's do Mokuri ear 04. As you can see here, we now have these ears that are attached. Now, since the scale is exact to what the previous model was, you'll see that they're part of it. Now, these also will need a material. So let's go ahead and click on ear 04, ear 0402, and let's find the ear material that goes along with it. Well, it doesn't look like there is one. We know it's there though. So let's click on this material, base color. Let's go down to our base color. And if we click on the section here and we click image texture, this will allow us to choose an image texture. Mokuri ear .psd, or, or we have Mokuri ear .psd, which is actually the PSD file that is used for editing the ears. And you'll see that they now have a color that matches. So why is there a Photoshop file here? Well, most models can be edited quite easily and you can edit the textures that come along with them quite easily. So let's save this as a Blender file for now. You probably don't want to save it inside your Unity folder, so it's a good idea to have somewhere, maybe in your documents, where you can have some sort of Blender working file. Now let's take a look at some of those materials. 
At the beginning of the, of the tutorial, I recommended that you installed Krita. So let's go ahead and get Krita loaded. But before we start opening files in there, let's take a look at how the textures are laid out on the model. I'm going to go up to Armature and just hide it for now. It makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Now over here, you'll see that the model itself is ni nicely laid out and has a texture. If we go into our edit mode and we press 3 to go to faces mode, you'll see that it's made up of, of a number of triangles. That's obvious. If we go to UV editing, we can actually see where those triangles are laid out on the map. This is body base color. What you see here is called a UV map. And this UV map indicates where all of the color is. If you want to change some things on the model that aren't mirrored, you'll need to re-UV re map it. I'll do another tutorial on how to do that later. And I have done a few tutorials on that in the past. It's not terribly difficult. But for now, we're going to use the existing UV map and just recolor it. Now what you can do is select the UV map from here. And you can click UV, Export UV Layout. Save this in the same folder as the rest of the texture file so it's easy to find. Now from here, open up Krita. You can do some of this painting inside Blender, but an image editing program is going to give you a lot more options. So here's our base body, base color. This isn't very useful to, to draw on it. We'd have to go back and forth between Blender and sort of guess what's going on. With our UV file, however, it makes it, it, makes it really easy to pull that up and essentially paint within the lines. If I drag my body UV into the scene, it's going to ask me if I want to insert it as a new layer. We're going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see here, all of the texture files that make up the body of Mokuri are laid out. From here, all you have to do is click on your magic wand and in the body UV layer, select the outside. Now you can go to, now you can go to the select tab at the top and invert the selection. Now you only have this parts of the model selected that you can paint in. Now, if you go down to layer one again, you can even control C the layer and control V. And now you have a layer that is just the parts that you want to paint on. You're going to want to leave the other layer as part of it when you export the file, just so that any, any UV overlap is taken care of. Now, we can take this part of the model and you can paint on it. You can even do something as simple as modifying the colors on the fly. So for example, you can adjust the color balance. And if you just wanted to simply recolor your Mercury, let's say make it a bit of a forest green, that's pretty much all you have to do. So if we take this file now and save as, and we can call this body base color green. Repeat that process for the props file, and you'll have some customization in your own coloring. And you can see those changes inside Blender and also in Unity. So in here, instead of choosing body base color, I choose body base color green. And how we have a green looking Mercury. Oh, and don't forget to unselect the UV map before you export it. Simply save the file as a PNG, and there you go. You'll need to reload it to see those changes. So continue to make those changes until you're happy with whatever, whatever coloration you'd like. And you'll see that there's some mixture that's going on in there. Essentially play around with your Mercury until you're happy. Now we need to export the final version. We want to, we want to attach these new ears. So let's go ahead and base armature, which is the original model. We're merging the ears. We're going to attach them to actually the head because we know that these, we know that these ears are closest to the head bone and they should move with the head bone. This merges the ears in. Don't forget to save. And now finally, we're going to get rid of our zero weight bones and merge our meshes together. Now that you're happy with the way that the model, model is set up, under join meshes, just click all. Now we click export model and we want to put this back in our Unity project folder. In Unity, I have a Mulcuri PJ folder. I'm going to go ahead and call this Mulcuri tutorial. Now let's head back into Unity. Feel free to leave Blender open just in case there's something you missed or you forgot to change something or you decide that you wanted to add something later on. This can become a working file and you can constantly make changes. Don't forget to save copies. So here's our Mercury tutorial avatar. Before we drag it into the scene, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything is set up correctly. Under materials, you want to make sure that it says use external materials legacy. Under rig, you want to make sure that it's set to humanoid rig. If it, you get an error like this, hit apply, go back to humanoid, and then click on configure. Make sure you save your scene. Make sure you have hips, spine, and chest. 
left shoulder, left arm, forearm left, left wrist, and so on. You could have renamed these as well, but it's not a huge deal. Left eye and right eye, let's go ahead and clear these out because we don't need them anymore. You can, you can clear them out by pressing delete on your keyboard, or you can go here and select none. Same thing with jaw, we want to remove that as well. Hit apply. And just to make sure everything is weighted properly, let's go ahead to muscles and settings. And with shift middle click, we can select, cent, with shift middle click, we can center the model and then open and close to make sure that there's no weight painting problems. And as you can see, there are. So what do you do if you've got some weight painting problems? Well, the fix is pretty simple. Let's go over to edit mode and let's select this left ear. Let's also select this part inside. And what we want to do, and I'm selecting that with control L, which selects everything linked inside. Now we want to make sure that this is attached to the head. So if you go down to the object data properties tab and you find, and you find the head vertex group, or in this case, find the head vertex group, and we go ahead and click assign. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna click this here, control L to select all. And we're gonna go ahead and control click the fuzzy bit inside and control L to select all. And again, we're gonna hit head and hit assign. Now, this, if we go into our weight painting mode, you'll see that all the parts that are attached to the head are now equally weighted to the head. This should keep the model connected and all of the parts that we're moving before will now move with the head correctly. So now we need to export our model again. So let's go ahead and click export model. And again, we'll query tutorial. Back in Unity, you'll see that it updated again. We're gonna go ahead and hit none. We're gonna go back to humanoid and hit apply. Now we're going to configure it. And with the settings the way they were, removing the left eye and right eye, as well as the hair front, hit apply, go to muscles and settings. And again, let's make sure that we can open and close. Okay, now his ears are moving with his head. That's much better. You'll come across these kinds of things all the time when you're automatically merging models. Sometimes they won't choose the correct weights to merge them in, and sometimes some things will be missed. That's an easy way to attach things, and if your attachments doesn't work, if your attachments don't work correctly inside Blender, you can use that technique to add things in. Okay, so we're almost ready. Under our model, we want to make sure that we click Legacy Blend Shape Normals. This has to be selected. Now we're ready to bring the model in. Let's go ahead and bring it in. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of how to get an avatar into Avatar 3.0. At the root of your avatar, go ahead and hit Add Component. We're going to do a VRC Avatar Descriptor, and we're going to set our view position. Click Edit. And one nice little feature they have here is that now you can do it with the control widgets. You want to make sure that your avatar ball, just like in all my other tutorials, is basically in the middle of the screen. So go ahead and go into isometric mode and flip it left and right. And over here, you want it to be right in the center of your eyeballs. Next, turn it to its side. And you also want to make sure that it's right on your eyes, ideally not in your head, but right there on your eyes. It's easier to see the green line or the yellow line of the widget to line it up. Just make sure it's right on your eyes. Next, we want lip sync. And you'll notice visine blend shapes. And you want to drag in your body. Wait a minute. We don't have any of those. So let's head back into Blender. It's really easy to make visemes for Japanese models. All you have to do is go down to visemes. And you're going to see that it says A, ah, O, oh, and Ch. This model doesn't have those. But you'll see here you have A. Ah, O and E, which is basically the same mouth shape as Ch. Go ahead and click Create Visemes, save your model, and export it again, simply overriding the previous one. Then when you click back into Unity, you'll see that it updates. Now, you may need to go into Rig, hit None, and hit Apply again. Go ahead and drag the body back in, and you'll see, you'll see your blend shapes are there. I recommend not using all of these. If a blend shape was provided for, if a blend shape was provided for a certain mouth shape, you should use it. So you can look up the Japanese vowel sounds if you'd like, but I'll show you what they are here. This is A, this is E, this is E, this is O, this is U, and you also have an N sound, which is this one. By using those blend shapes instead of the ones that Cat's Blender plugin generated, the mouth will be a little more expressive.
Mercury doesn't have any eye look bones, so we don't actually need those. So for eye movements, let's leave them alone. We're also going to leave the eye transforms alone, but we are going to do eyelid type, and we're going to say that it's a blend shape, because it is, and we're going to grab the body mesh, like this, and for blank, for blank, what you're looking for is Mapataki. That's this one here. For looking up and looking down, you want them set to none. That's true for this particular model. This may not be true for others. Go ahead and save. And you could upload your model like this. You wouldn't have any facial animation, but you would have everything else. The model will work in Avatars 3.0, and that's really all you have to do for a basic model upload. But we're going to go a little bit further, and we're going to start using some playable layers and expressions. So go ahead and turn on playable layers. The first thing we want to do is make a new FX layer. So click on the FX layer to give a slot. Go ahead and call it something to match your avatar. So Mokuri FX. We're going to go over to the parameters tab and create two parameters in the parameters tab. They're going to be int. Let's call them gesture left and gesture right. Make sure you set int as their type. Now go back into the layers tab and make two layers. Right hand gestures and left hand gestures. Next, you're also going to need to take the right hand gestures and left hand gestures and set the weight to one by clicking on this little gear icon here in the corner. So under left hand gestures, create a new state, an empty state, and you want to call this something like, I don't know, start. You can rename it up here. So you need to create a transition from any state over here to the idle state or your starting state. Then if you click on the line between the two, gesture left equals zero. This essentially resets everything as the animation is running. Next, you want to bring in your animations. Inside the Lesser Mercury, there's an animation folder. And inside here, you're going to find Sad, sleepy smile, smile one, and surprise. You can just drag them straight into this here and line them up. To, so in this case, you want to set the facial animations to appear on the hand gestures from one to seven. And they go in this order. Fist, hand open, finger point, victory, rock and roll, handgun, and thumbs up. Once you've dragged in your animations and ordered them, you want to create a transition from any state to the first one. Click on the line that you created between the two Set the fixed duration, transition duration to 0.1. You want to uncheck can transition to self. This speeds things up and makes things look correctly. The preview source state should be start, which is set to zero. Now in the condition section down here, you're going to put gesture left equals and a number. Five is rock and roll, so let's do that. Same thing with the rest of them. Essentially make transition sleepy. Click on the transition itself. Again, transition duration one. Uncheck chance can transition to self, create a condition, gesture left, continue that for all of them. You also want in this area here, make sure that you set transition duration to 0 0.1 and uncheck can transition to self. Now that that's all finished, you can easily create the same gestures on your other hand. Now you could even make other animations to go on the other hand as well, but that's how you do basic gestures. In here, from any, simply right click, create state, empty, same thing, we're gonna call this something like start. And then from any state, make transition to start. Remember to uncheck the transition, or remember to set the transition duration to one, can't change this into self, Make sure gesture right in this case is equal to zero. Then we can go back to our left hand gestures and copy these. Any right hand gestures, we can paste them right clicking. Then just like before, you're going to set them up exactly the same way. We're going to take create transition from any state and set the transition durations. Except this time, you're going to put the conditions to gesture right equals whatever they happen to be. One more thing, if you want a hand gesture to not trigger a facial gesture, say for example hand open, you need to set it to an empty state. So you can just right click, create state, empty. Let's say that this is hand open, I'm going to go ahead and call this H open. 
I need to make sure that you set the transition to an empty state. So we're going to go to any state, make transition, hand open. So this is empty. This actually has none. We're going to click on here. Gesture left equals two. Now I didn't use one for fist either, so I'm going to do the same thing. Create state, empty. Call this fist. Make transition to fist. And then in here, click on the line. Condition, gesture left, equals one. Just make sure you have all seven. Like this. Okay, so once these are all set up, go back and click on go back and click on your avatar root, and then over here, scroll down to where it says FX. We're gonna drag in the one we just made. And that's it. You can upload the avatar now and you'll have these basic facial expressions. That's it for getting an avatar mostly to the point where it's equivalent to the previous avatars 2.0 setup. For custom emojis and the emoji menu, that's the next tutorial.